guys, welcome back to my channel. How are you guys doing? Are you good? Are you safe? Are you healthy? Okay, in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys my recommendations for some of the best protein-free products for your protein-sensitive hair. And I'm also going to be sharing my favorite tricks and tips on how you can spot proteins in products so that you can afford to avoid them as and when you need to. So make sure that you stay tuned to the end of this video so that you don't miss out on any of these game-changing tips. If you're new here, my name's Fops. I'm a trichologist, which is basically just a fancy word for a hair and scalp specialist. Every single Friday, I release a new video that gives you real understanding as well as real practical tools to help you upgrade your hair and scalp care for longer, stronger, healthier hair, all backed by science. So make yourself comfortable, grab yourself a cup of tea, get your snacks, and let's get into this video. Now chances are, if you've clicked on this video, you probably already know what protein sensitivity is from first-hand experience, so I won't spend too long here. But essentially, protein-sensitive hair is hair that reacts badly when protein products are used on it. So it can react anyway from being more limp, to being more rough, to being hard, to being super elastic, or super soft, or super mushy. Honestly, when it comes to protein sensitivity, it's fair game, anything goes. Now I do want to make a quick disclaimer before we really get into this video. All hair needs protein because all hair is made of protein. So even if your hair is protein sensitive, it does not mean that your hair does not need protein. I know that's not what you expected me to say when you clicked on this protein free video, but the game is the game. That being said, the truth is certain hair types have aversions to certain types of protein. And that's just a fact of life. Now, of course, I just said that protein sensitive hair does need protein, but I always advise that the best way to start is to have a protein free product arsenal as a baseline and then you can work your way up from there by introducing proteins through your shampoos or through your conditioners or through your leave-ins just a little bit at a time so that you're making sure that you are not overloading your hair with protein but the issue is that most products out there on the market already contain a lot of proteins in them or some proteins in them so it makes it very difficult for people who have protein sensitive hair to be able to identify which products have these proteins in them so that they can avoid them whilst they're trying to create that protein free baseline. So now that all of that has been cleared up, let's get into these protein-free baseline products. <sighs> Stay hydrated, kids. Woo, it's hot out here. Right. The first set of products that I'm going to be sharing with you guys today are shampoos and conditioners. I will say that I only have a few of these products just because I cannot hoard or keep all of these products as I only use a few at a time but all the ones that I don't have with me I'm going to pop them somewhere in the video and I'm also going to pop the ingredients up on the screen so that we can all go through them together so the first product is a personal fave and it is the Tresemme cleanse and replenish two-in-one shampoo and conditioner so this is actually the shampoo that i use on a weekly basis the main things that i do want to say about this shampoo is that it does contain sulfates and the only reason why i use this is because i needed a clarifying shampoo i'll probably do another video on sulfates and silicones another day but this is a really really great clarifying shampoo but because it also has conditioner in it it's a two-in-one it doesn't actually dry out your hair at all and the slip is is great honestly I cannot recommend this shampoo enough now if you're looking for a shampoo that is also really good at clarifying your hair and is protein free the Giovanni 50 50 shampoo and conditioner combo is really really good as well definitely one of the better protein free shampoo conditioner combos out there it's really really great at cleansing your hair without drying out your hair I'd recommend the Giovanni shampoo and conditioner combo for people who have dry hair or who struggle with having dry hair after they've washed and conditioned their hair as well as people who have fine textured hair now the next product I'm going to be talking about is a deep conditioner. This is hands down top three protein free deep conditioners and it is none other than the As I Am Hydration Elation. Y'all, find me somebody who has a problem with this product. Bring, bring them to me because we need to have chats. But honestly guys, this product is just like love in a tub it's like butter in my what rhymes with butter butter it's like the nutter butter of protein free deep conditioners wait i don't like nutter butters whether your hair is relaxed whether your hair is curly whether your hair is coily whether your hair is kinky 
I can guarantee you that nine times out of 10, this protein free conditioner will work wonders on your hair. It is super moisturizing. It has a really, really thick consistency. I really, really wish I had some with me, but the rate at which I go through this deep conditioner, I'm not surprised that I don't have some with me. <laughs> but just general all round winner, love this deep conditioner. Now moving on to leave-ins and creams. The first leave-in that I'm going to talk about today is a crowd favorite and it is the Kinky Curly Not Today. Again, I think this is one of those products that everyone has used and most people like. It's a really, really great lightweight, organic protein-free leave-in conditioner. The only thing that I will say about this product is the fact that it does not have many if any oils in it so although this product works really well with most hair textures i would say that it is best for coarser textures as well as low porosity hair just because it doesn't have many butters or oils in it if any at all so it is definitely a lightweight moisturizer the next leave-in i'm going to share with you guys is my all-time all time, all time favorite leave-in. This is the Camille Rose Curl Love Moisture Milk. Guys, if you haven't tried this, I cannot, I cannot recommend this more. My wash day is not complete without this leave-in. My moisturizing method is not complete without this leave-in. And of course, it's protein-free, so you don't have to worry about the buildup. The consistency of this cream is perfect. It's like halfway between a lotion and a butter. So it's not as thick as a butter, but it's also not as watery. It's definitely a lot denser than say the Kinky Curly Not Today. So yeah, the consistency is great. It's super moisturizing and it also has a good deal of slip to it. It literally just like soaks into my high porosity hair. To be fair, most things soak into my high porosity hair, but I feel like this soaks in just a lot more seamlessly. So if you have mid to high porosity hair, I would highly recommend this protein-free leave-in cream. The moisture milk, it works wonders. Yeah. Now the last entry that I'm going to make in the leave-in section of these protein-free products is the Jane Carter Solution Curl Defining Cream. Now this is more of a creamy texture. So if you have thicker, coarser, kinkier textured hair, then I would definitely recommend this. The one thing that I do want to say about all of the leave-ins and the creams that I've mentioned in this section is the fact that they all contain film-forming humectants. If you haven't seen the video that I did about film-forming humectants and how they're the best moisturizers for natural hair, I'll pop the link up here so you can go ahead and watch that video when you're done with this one. But essentially film-forming humectants are basically like normal humectants but on steroids and they are really really great at keeping your hair moisturized for longer film forming humectants also have a good amount of slip so examples of film forming humectants would be things like aloe vera gel flaxseed gel guar gum pectin so all of the natural ingredients that produce a mucus oh that word mucus yeah i mean i don't really have a better word for it now speaking of plant gels the last two products that i want to share with you guys are gels so styling gels that you can use that are protein free so the first gel and also my favorite gel is the kinky curly curling custard let's just jump into the ingredients of this product real quick so the ingredients of the Kinky Curly Curling Custard are botanical infusion of water, horsetail, chamomile, nettle and marshmallow, by the way, film forming humectants, organic aloe vera juice, film forming humectant, agave nectar extract, vitamin E, pectic, film forming humectant, citric acid, potassium sorbate and natural fragrance. There's absolutely no protein in this product and it's also just a great blend of natural products. Again, one of the things I love about the curling custard is because it has the film forming humectants, you can get all of the slip and all of the detangling properties and all of the moisture retention as well as a good amount of hold. Now, similarly to the Kinky Curly Curling Custard, the last protein-free product that I want to share with you guys is the Camille Rose Naturals Curl Maker with marshmallow and agave leaf extract, pectin, again, there's pectin, marshmallow root extract, agave leaf extract, horsetail extract. So I would say that the ingredients for this are fairly similar to the Kinky Curling Curling Custard, 
but the only difference between this for me and the kinky curling curling custard is the fact that this has a bit less hold in it whilst i would recommend the kinky curling curling custard for coarser hair textures because it does have a bit more hold to it i would definitely say that this would be a good alternative for finer hair textures or fine to mid hair textures just because the hold is definitely not as strong as the kinky curly this tends to water down when you mix it with other products whereas i feel like the kinky curly still holds its own when you are using it on top of say another leave-in or another cream or even with a butter or an oil whereas this seems to fall apart a bit more easily real quick guys if you're enjoying this video please go ahead and give me a thumbs up i've also put all of the links to the products that i've mentioned in the description box below so that you can go ahead and click on those if you're interested in buying any of them also i do want to say that the list is in no way exhaustive these are just some of my favorite protein free products so if you have any protein free products that i haven't mentioned that you think are worth mentioning go ahead and pop them in the comments below and let's see if we can get a good list going but for now let's get into the real meat of this video let's talk about how you can spot proteins in your hair products so that you can give them a hard pass if they're not what you're looking for okay we've already established that most of the products out there on the market probably already contain proteins so aside from the products that i've recommended in this video or products that are overtly marketed as protein free products how do we know which products to avoid and which products to buy this is why it's so important to be able to understand product labels and if you haven't already seen my video on top tips to understanding product labels i'll pop that up here so you can go ahead and open that in another tab but my point is how do you know which products to avoid if you don't know what you're looking for but that's all going to change in about two minutes. Okay, let's start with trigger words. I'm gonna share with you guys the trigger words that you can almost always guarantee will be either before or after a protein listed in any product ingredient list. The first and the most common trigger word is hydrolyzed. Now you will typically see in product lists, hydrolyzed X protein, hydrolyzed collagen protein, hydrolyzed wheat protein, hydrolyzed keratin protein. You get the gist. The second trigger word that you should look out for is amino acids. So again, in the same way that you will see with hydrolyzed proteins, you will also see silk amino acids, collagen amino acids, and so on and so forth. Now here's a bonus tip for being able to spot amino acids in products. Most of the time you will see that they are listed as X amino acids, but sometimes product ingredients will list the actual name of the amino acid. Now there are about 20 to 22 amino acids. So a good rule of thumb to work with is if it ends in ene. So for example, cysteine, proline, arginine, lysine, and so on and so forth. The third trigger word that you can look for are peptides. Again, these are also just a different form of proteins. So you will also see soy peptides, wheat peptides, quinoa peptides, you get the gist. Now there are some amino acids that don't end in E nor I and E, but they're so far and in between that the likelihood of you finding them in any hair care products are very slim. Now let's move on to sneaky prefixes. There are typically only three main ones that you will ever see coming before hydrolyzed protein, but it's all still the same thing. Don't be bamboozled. The first sneaky prefix that you should be looking out for is cocoil, cocoil, cocoil. Yeah, let's just go with cocoil. The second sneaky prefix is cocodemonium hydroxypropyl. And the third one is laurel demonium hydroxypropyl. So these are the three main prefixes that ingredients list will include before they say the name of the protein or the type of hydrolyzed protein that they use. But don't be fooled by these. It's all the same thing. So that's it for this video. I hope this has been helpful for you guys. Let me know in the comments below, would you guys be interested in a mini cheeky protein series? Yes, no, maybe? Also, if you guys have enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any videos that I post. Thank you so much again for watching, guys. Thank you for supporting my channel and I hope you have a lovely weekend and I'll see you next weekend. Bye. Mwah.